Alrighty guys, what is up? So right now we are doing our very first vlog on the Canon EOS R5 with the R15 or 35 with the RV Mic Pro Plus. And uh, just let me know how it looks. So right now we are shooting at just the regular 4K mode. So pretty much in this vlog, I'm gonna be doing a lot of testing with the R5. I'm gonna try to push it as much as I do, especially when it just comes to the type of footage that I usually do when it comes to like YouTube, B-roll, cinematic stuff. I'm going to try to push it as much as I can. Um, but right here, I'm at the old Folsom Bridge, as you guys can tell, but tomorrow, we are actually gonna be going to a place known as Mount Tamalpais. It is located in San Francisco. And honestly, I've seen so many pictures there and it just looks really, really good at sunset. So I'm planning to go there for some sunset pics, some sunset video, time lapses, things like that, and see how well the R5 performs. But right now, just enjoying this bridge. So I'll see you guys then. Alrighty guys, so today is the next day and right now we're packing up our bags, just getting some food, water, stuff like that. And we're gonna be heading out soon to Mount Tamalpais. Still, no, still don't know if I'm saying it right. So as you guys can tell right over here, we just made it to Mount Tamalpais or Tamalpais. Still have no idea how to say it, but honestly, the view here is so nice as you guys just saw there at the Outlook. However, this place isn't exactly the place that I want to stop by yet because right here is pretty much just open skies. And over there, if you guys saw, you can see the bay. So pretty much, you can pretty much just see most of, almost all of San Francisco right down there. But that's technically not the place that I want to go to because if you guys see over here, there's literally like a whole landscape that is completely covered by the clouds. So technically right now, we're actually above the clouds, which is extremely crazy, but the view here is so nice. But oh yeah, you guys, you guys know that I'm definitely gonna fly my drone. Cause guys, just, just look at this view. It looks so, so good. Again, as I said, I'm gonna continue testing out this camera. Right now we're only able to record like 20 minutes in 4K HQ, which is kind of decent. Cause I mean, you know, we're taking 8K, footage and then putting it within a 4k file so again it makes sense why it's only that low but again we're going to continue pushing this camera to see how much it can do within this heat all right guys so right now i love the r5 right here on the switch pod because right now i'm just taking a time lapse of the clouds coming in from pretty much near the Bay Area side, coming closer here. Right now I took out the CF Express card, so right now it is taking all the pictures onto the SD card, because I want to save the CF Express card for later in the sunset, because I definitely do want to do more 120p footage, um, more B-roll, because I did bring my Zhiyun Weibo S, so I'm definitely gonna be doing some gimbal shots, and that's why I want to save that CF Express card so I can take uh, slow-mo shots with that. Alright guys, we are officially here at the place that I've always wanted to go to. And here is Mill Valley or Mount Tamaplos. Still have no idea how to say it, but guys, the view looks amazing. So I'm about to show you guys how this thing looks. So guys, this spot is literally like the perfect place just to test out the drone. I can get some really nice uh, 120p footage, especially right here with the golden grass and stuff. So I'm gonna bring my Zhiyun Weibo S, get some nice gimbal shots, and also probably do more time lapses here. Also try to do some more long exposure stuff. I'm trying to get better at uh, long exposure photography. And honestly, fly the drone. I really, really wanna fly the drone here because there's a lot of great shots I can get here and super, super excited. All right guys, the so first test is 8K RAW. So right now we are here back in 8K RAW. Let me know how it looks. Obviously the dynamic range is gonna look amazing. So far, I think we left around, I think like 10 o'clock. And already right now, I believe it's almost five o'clock. So, with 8K RAW, they're only giving me 10 minutes to record with, which kind of does make sense because I've already done a lot of shooting with a standard 4K and 4K 120. So right now it went from 15 minutes to 10 minutes. So not too bad, but again, still kind of still trying to figure out this this thing. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna stop it right now because I don't want to take up all this space on my CF Express card. So see ya.
guys, so that is gonna do it for us on this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this little first vlog with Kanyas R5. And gotta be honest, I rewatched the entire thing from start to finish and it looked so good. Like I'm super impressed with just the full frame sensor since the R5 is actually my very first camera that is actually full frame. And with the Kanyas R, I didn't necessarily get a whole lot of time. I only had it for a month and then I had to give it back purely just because obviously I was saving up for the Kanyas R5. And I gotta be honest with you, it was so worth it. Like the footage looks really, really good. Obviously, I know that there's like a whole ton of controversy with the Canon EOS R5, which I will talk about more in my final review with the R5 that should be coming up uh, sometime next week. So if you guys are interested to hear what my final thoughts about the Canon EOS R5 is, make sure to subscribe down below and like this video. And also before I wrap up today's video, I just wanna talk a bit more about some of the issues that people were having with their R5 or some people were more skeptical with their R5. And I think one of the first ones was people worrying about like the IBIS being a little too strong. And sometimes Sometimes it is true that the IBIS can be a little bit strong, especially if you are all the way to 15 mil. But guys, one of the biggest ways how you can fix that is actually just by turning off the stabilizer button on your 15 to 35 lens. And once you turn that off, honestly, I didn't get any type of IBIS wobbles and especially in vlogging, it looked really, really good. The only time I turn it back on is if I'm doing like, you know, slow motion footage, like 60 frames per second or 120 frames per second. That's the only time I turn it back on at a 15 mil. But other than that, I always just keep it off, uh, especially when I'm just doing regular vlogs. But if I'm at like any other, uh, you know, focal length, like 35 or anything like that, um, then I would definitely keep the stabilizer on because it honestly really does help. Um, and you can see a pretty big difference without it and with it. So the IBIS is really good. Just in some scenarios, you might want to turn it off, but again, it still works perfectly fine. And also another question that I got, especially with the Kanyos R5 is how to edit the footage since all of the files are massive. And it is true, these files are really big, but also again, it depends on what your laptop is or your PC, if you have like a MacBook or a Windows laptop or Windows PC, it really depends on what you're using. Personally for me, um, usually with my Dell XPS 17, um, for some reason it does the 4K uh, clips really, really well. The 4K 120 and 8K clips obviously don't play back that smoothly. So what you guys wanna do is, especially um, if you are a Premiere Pro user like me, you want to right click on your, uh, on your clip in the import section, you want to go down to proxies, you wanna create proxies, now you guys can either create a H.264 proxy or you guys can do a ProRes uh, proxy and pretty much it will take you to Media Encoder and within Media Encoder it will transcode your footage pretty much just to make it a lot smaller. So when you are editing your video within Premiere Pro, it's gonna play back the footage a lot smoother compared to playing it uh, on its full original size. However, when it does come to my PC, it's kind of like the opposite from my laptop because my PC can't necessarily handle the regular 4K files that well. But especially when it comes to 4K 120 though, it actually handles that footage really, really well. I don't know what it is. I mean, my specs on my PC is uh, Intel i7 8th generation, um, an RTX 2060, 48 gigs of RAM. Uh, and that's pretty much like the main specs on my PC. So I don't know how it can handle 4K 120 better than just regular 4K, but for some reason it does do it really well. It's just with 8K footage and standard 4K footage, I just need to transcode the footage and it will play back very, very smoothly. So for those who were skeptical on the editing process with uh, using R5 footage, it's not necessarily that difficult. It's just that it's gonna take a bit of some time to transcode your footage. And also it will take a bit more space on your uh, hard drive or your SSD. So my recommendation is like once you're done uh, finishing with your video, if you're not gonna go back to your uh, uh, Premiere Pro project, then I would just recommend going into your documents and deleting all those proxies so it doesn't take up too much space um, in your storage. Alrighty guys, and that is gonna do for us on this video. So if you guys enjoyed this very first vlog with the R5, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And also comment down your thoughts on Mount Temelpais. That's exactly how you say it, I know. Especially in the entire vlog, I had no idea how to say it, but I looked it up and it's Mount Tamalpais. So if you guys were curious, that's how it sounds. But honestly, I really, really wanna go there again because the scenery there is just amazing. All right, guys, I'll see you next time. Peace.